Happy Friday, Bears fans. Brad here to break down what happened day eight of Chicago Bears training camp. Now, Yannick Ngakwe did not play today, but there's plenty to talk about with him as well. But first, make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube and rate the show five stars everywhere that you get your podcast. So today, slow, unpadded, a lot of walkthroughs, so not too many things happen today, but we still have our most impressive, got to talk about some injuries, offense and defense, you know the drill, so let's start with who was the most impressive today. Now, on the offensive side of the ball, there was some solid play. I don't really think that anybody won offense or defense like they did uh, before. But today, I'm going to surprise some people. My most impressive is Deonta Foreman. Deonta Foreman, I think it was Brad Biggs that reported, he was very impressed with what Foreman was able to do in the passing game. This is something that we need to see out of a running back. And Foreman, to get the most out of his opportunity, he is, in fact, showing those reps. So looking very smooth as a route runner. And I believe he's only had 51 total targets. Like, it's a very low number of targets he's had throughout his career. But Foreman's stock is up. He was looking good, looking smooth in the pass catching category, which for Khalil Herbert, that's kind of bad news for him. But it does still seem like it's going to be a one two combo there. But who's number two? Who's on the defensive side of the ball? Yet again, I was I was tempted Tyreek Stevenson. I feel like I give it to him all the time in Javon Dexter. But I had to switch it up. This is a little hokey, but I'm giving it to Yannick Ngakwe. So also we clarified it's Yannick, not Yannick. I know I was saying that yesterday. But Yannick Ngakwe, he didn't practice today, but he won in the interview. I knew a lot of people really liked what he had to say. He kind of talked about how he felt like this was his destiny. He had a bear, t- he has a bear tattoo on his hand. Not the Bears, but just a bear tattoo. His favorite player growing up was Walter Payton. Also, a little bit about the interview. Eberflus says that he sees Yannick as an every down player. Do I buy it? Eh, not so much. And let me know what you think down in the chat. Is Yannick actually going to be a every down player? To me, he's never been that in his career, and I like him as a pass rush specialist. So I'm fine with that. But also, too, um, it sounds like the Bears stuck to their price and got Yannick at the price that they wanted. So it seems like they were in conversations for the past five uh, five months or so, but then finally he was able to get the deal done. Also, another piece reported from Ian Rappaport that the Bears were looking at Jadavion Clowney and Daniil Hunter as well as Yannick and ultimately went with Ngakwe um, at the obviously, uh, finally, but he seemed to be their number one choice. Now, we talked about this on the Larger Scale podcast, that with this, we felt, like I, I personally felt that the Bears were looking at Daniil Hunter, and that was the domino that felt, uh, that fell. And honestly, that seems to be what happened here. We saw Daniil Hunter get his deal, and then ultimately, Yannick ends up getting signed by the Chicago Bears, So I do believe that what we talked about seemed to be what actually happened behind closed doors, which is actually pretty cool. But let's go over to the injuries, because unfortunately, the injuries are actually still a big issue. Tevin Jenkins was not practicing today. Nate Davis wasn't practicing today, but he was actually at the facility. A lot of people have not even seen Nate Davis out there, but today was a special day. They were able to see him. But Lucas Patrick was getting first team reps at the center position. I'm a little nervous. Do you think that the Bears are going to sign or need to sign somebody on the interior? Is this a big issue or is this just a storyline that's popping up because they're just not out there? To me, I'm not going to worry about anything until I see somebody go on IR or see some bigger news come out about those individuals. Demarcus Walker also did not practice. Jack Sanborn and Edmonds also did not practice at that linebacker position. Hopefully Edmonds might have just been a veteran day off, but still nothing has come out about that. His Eberflus holds it down lock and key. But let's switch over to the offensive side of the ball. So Justin Fields, really good day today. He's kind of stepped back and 
did a lot better than what he did last practice. In a two-minute drill, he went five for six, and it ended up going for a field goal. But something that was impressive was it, there was a third down play that they absolutely had to get the first down. Justin Fields makes the play, not to his first read, had to go through his progressions over to Travis Homer to pick up the first down. Also, he had some good connections over to, you guessed it, Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool and Justin Fields continue to have a good chemistry. He was putting the ball to Chase Claypool fairly well and fairly often. It does seem like maybe maybe Darnell is going to be the his third favorite player now <laughs> next to DJ Moore and Chase Claypool. But I'm fine with that. I'm fine with seeing somebody who has a different body composition than the other wide receivers we have on the roster getting that good connection with Justin Fields. And we've said this all the time with a contested catch receiver. It's about trust and it's good to see Justin getting that trust with his wide receivers. But let's go over to the running backs. Now, I already talked about Deonta Foreman. Roshan Johnson had some good pass blocking reps. And it really does seem like Roshan is the best pass blocking back on this team. So that might mean that in third down situations, Roshan does get some of that playing time. And also, I just want to applaud Roshan for this because everyone usually says pass blocking is one of the hardest things to do when coming into the league because they're bigger, they're faster, and it's usually something that running backs don't get asked to do as much in the college game because if you're good enough to go to the NFL level, chances are they always want to put the ball in your hands. But also moving more towards the wide receiver still, DJ Moore still looking good, had a good route against Terrell Smith for a touchdown, and also I believe Chase Claypool had a one-handed grab against Tyreek Stevenson, for a touchdown as well, and Tyler Scott put the moves on Ojemudie and was able to basically put him on skates, so nice to see the rookie with some good routes. Now, on a negative note, Velas, we haven't talked about Velas too much recently, and that's because he's been a lot more up and down. Before, he was looking more like a wide receiver. Now, he's been kind of making some drops. Now, yet again, you're seeing that natural up and down, which... We kind of expected out of Bayless. So he still had some good reps at the very beginning of practice. Now it's kind of evening and teetering out. But it really does seem like Tyler Scott is going to be that fourth wide receiver on the roster. Um, also, a little bit on the offense too. Offensive line, some pass pro struggles just overall. That's something that does make me nervous. This offensive line, we need. it seems like everything else is coming together but we just need this offensive line to hold together for Justin Fields. Now, just a couple of quick nuggets on the defense. Javon Dexter looking good. Zach Pearson said he's been having a very good camp so far. He also got pressure up the middle on Justin Fields. Justin had to throw the ball um, to a wide receiver. Ultimately, what ended up happening, Tyreek Stevenson swats it down and breaks up the play. Also, Tyreek Stevenson, Lots of pass breakups today. It seems like all the time you just scroll through Twitter, Stevenson pass breakup, Stevenson pass breakup. He's really stepped up this week and you love to see it. Now, Noah Sewell also with Sanborn being out, keeps stepping up and making some plays. Had a good play to blow up um, a running back in the backfield. Same thing with Terrell Smith and Josh Blackwell, the Nickel, uh, the slot corner, he sounds like he might also be playing some safety, had an interception on Justin Fields as well. Overall, not, not too much stuff going on. The Bears did sign Mercedes Lewis. I might create a separate video just to kind of break that down, but I do like the signing. One year, $2 million, and ultimately, you are getting a good blocking tight end to bolster one of the best tight end rooms, maybe even in the NFL if I do say so myself, with Tanyan, Komet, and Mercedes Lewis. But let me know what you think of the Mercedes Lewis signing down below in the comments. Have a great weekend. And with that, Unbearable Sports Podcast, we are out. Yeah, she's got some nice long hair and